Hello everyone. So today we will discuss chapter number six. Uh, this chapter is about IP security. Short form is IPsec. So we have three agenda items in this chapter. Uh, firstly, starting with the definition of IPsec protocol, we will discuss what is IPsec protocol, what are the different functionalities or services of IPsec protocols, and how we can implement IPsec in our existing network and what will be the advantage. Then we will discuss security association, the role of security association in IPsec and how it can be implemented as well. Then mods of operation. There are mainly two mods of operation that we use in IPsec or you can implement IPsec into two ways in fact. One is the transport mode and second is called tunnel that typically we use for VPN virtual private network. We will discuss that in detail. Uh, the last agenda item is IPsec architecture. We will discuss, I'll, I'll give you overview of IPsec architecture in this video and we will discuss IPsec architecture in detail in our part two. So today we are going to discuss two things. First is the definition of IPsec protocol um, and then the detail and the services of IPsec protocol. And then we will discuss the role of security association, different parameters of security association and mods of operation. So what is basically secure IPsec protocol? First of all, let's talk about it. IPsec protocol is basically, uh, it's, a, it's a secure network protocol, like a network security protocol, a suite of protocol, in fact, because it does use two protocols. So we can call it uh, a suite of protocol uh, that mainly provide encryption, authentication, and also data integrity to provide secure communication between uh, two computers. It could be host to host, host to server, or host to gateway as well. So IPsec is basically a network security suite of protocol suite of protocol that encrypts and authenticates authenticates the packets ip packets authenticate the ip packets uh, transmitted between or exchange you can say exchange i guess will be the right word exchanged between two computers and now these computer could be from you know client to server or server to server or for example from client to client or maybe client to gateway as well so we can we can actually uh, we can actually restrict the inbound packets outbound packets and we can test them out based on the rules so we will discuss that in detail so network security suite of protocol that encrypts and authenticates the packet transmitted between two or more computers. Uh, this IPsec protocol, this IPsec protocol, if you see this protocol actually run on, if you see on the OSC model, it operates or it runs on layer three. Layer number three, uh, which is basically a network layer and on your uh, TCP IP protocol. So it operates on internet layer. On well, the internet layer, if you remember the uh, TCP IP protocol where we have application layer first and then we have the transport layer then we have internet layer then we have the network layer so uh, the IPsec protocol it basically run on this protocol on this particular layer internet layer on your uh, TCP IP protocol so IPsec protocol uh, the benefit of I implementing IPsec protocol so or... by implementing IPsec protocol uh, we protect we, we mainly provide the security at packet level like ip packet level security and what will be the main advantage the main advantage is all your network applications will be fully secured not only those application uh, which does have some access control list or maybe some some kind of security mechanism in place but those application which are security ignorant so you can comfortably say by implementing ipsec protocol you can protect all your network applications and ipsec mainly ensure three things IPsec services, or you can say the main IPsec services are three. IPsec provide confidentiality. You can achieve confidentiality with IPsec. You can also get authentication. And it does provide integrity as well. Integrity as well. So what does it mean? It means, first of all, uh, the data will be fully confidential, like nobody can read the contents of the data. Secondly, authentication. You can ensure that from where the packet came from. Like we know this, the packet came from this right source. Okay. 
and uh, of course we we do the mutual authentication both sender and receiver they can authenticate each other and if there would be any tampering in the message that uh, unmod uh, unauthorized modification or tampering can be detected so if you implement ipsec so all the packets will be fully confidential they will provide authentication they will also protect the integrity like nobody can authenticate if uh, nobody can modify or tamper the data if packet gets tampered it will be it can be detected uh, mainly as as i told you guys ipsec is basically a suite of protocol and mainly it it uses two of the protocols so in ipsec mainly we use two protocols and one of the protocol is it's called authentication header authentication header that's one of the protocol also the short form is ah second is encapsulating encapsulating security payload security payload and it stands for esp so as the name suggests authentication header which is mainly responsible for authentication and integrity you can get authentication integrity by by using uh, authentication header protocol for confidentiality we use esp we will discuss in detail esp can further implemented in uh, just esp without authentication or with authentication we will discuss that in detail so that's why because ipsec uh, it it mainly involved two uh, two protocols these two protocols that's why we also called ipsec as a suite of the protocol so let's see uh, let me just give you overview of uh, the architecture of ipsec like just a basic overview of architecture and then we will discuss uh, the security association this is the ipsec architecture that's the architecture and if you see uh, it has two main stream or two main further protocol one is authentication header as name suggest it provides authentication it protects the authentication of the packet and plus it provides integrity of the packet as well if you implement ipsec uh, esp this particular thing it provides confidentiality and for confidentiality we use encryption algorithms like you can use symmetric encryption algorithm asymmetric uh, whatever the scheme you want to incorporate in your in your network and authentication algorithms as we already talked about md5 and we have also discussed cipher authenticators like cipher text based authentication authentication we also discussed hmac we discussed message authentication code and stuff like that so these are basically through which we can we can actually provide authentication so let me just dis, uh, describe all these things one by one what exactly we do in all these parameters and then we will discuss authentication header esp in our part 2 and we will come back to our secure, security association thing so uh, if you see one of the parameter of the architecture is authentication header so authentication header it mainly provides it mainly provides authentication as name suggest authentication of the source and destination like mutual authentication plus integrity of the message integrity of the packets or the messages and how we can get that we use digital signatures digital signatures we use authentication mechanism like hmac uh, we use message authentication code we use hashing as well for for h then we got esp encapsulating security payload which is responsible for confidentiality so it is responsible for confidentiality and again it gives the option uh, for for uh, for network administrator they can use symmetric encryption they can use symmetric encryption or they can use asymmetric encryption as well and it includes all the algorithms like for symmetric aes uh, triple dash blowfish cast and asymmetric rsa elliptical curve cryptography and some some other algorithms it also include doi doi stands for domain domain of interpretation domain of interpretation that's basically what dui is dui uh, it's you can say it basically manages all these application and it contains mainly the information about the authentication algorithms and encryption algorithm like it it basically provides uh, handles these two these two uh, services in fact or protocol you can say so dui mainly what it does it includes it includes the identifier Sorry, it's mainly include the identifiers 
for authentication algorithms and confidentiality or you can say encryption algorithms encryption algorithms uh, the last and the most important part is the key management like for example how the key will be managed between uh, a source and destination or you can say between two computers how that key will be managed because if it, you are going to use symmetric encryption algorithms, then there will be same key, like public, uh, same private key. Sender and receiver, they both, they will use the same key. If we are going to use asymmetric encryption, then public key, private key concept, everything will be managed by the key management scheme. So for key management, it can be implemented uh, manual way. Manual. Manual is basically a simple way. And second is you can use a automatic. For automatic distribution, people, some folks, they actually use Diffie-Hellman. Diffie-Hellman, it's one of the option, or you can also use IKE, Internet Key Encryption Schemes. Like it's basically the key wrapping schemes, we will discuss that. And the manual is basically, uh, it typically use IPsec. IPsec key, like you will manually distribute the keys and automatic is where we involve some automatic encryption, uh, automatic key distribution algorithms. So this is basically what the IPsec architecture, if you implement IPsec, so that's going to be, I mean, this is basically how uh, it will, it will work for authentication uh, of the packet, authentication of the user, sender and receiver. And again, for integrity of the packets. This is basically what will happen and then uh, encapsulating for uh, ESP for confidentiality. Uh, one thing which I would like to tell you guys, if you guys see here, ESP can be implemented with, I mean, it, it can it can be implemented with just encryption mode on or you can also provide or you can also use the authentication. Like, for example, ESP has two options with authentication or without authentication. Okay, we will discuss that in detail when we get to this algorithm. So now we are clear about the definition of IPsec protocol and the basic services offered by IPsec protocol. Um, and we, we also have discussed the uh, the basic architecture of IPsec, like the main uh, the protocols or algorithms that we use in IPsec and what exactly uh, the output is going to be. Uh, so let, let's, let's see what is basically a security association, why it is important and how it can be created. So security association, uh, to better understand what is security association. So let's let's take example. Let's say, for example, this is our secure network. For example, that's our secure network. Within this network, we have, for example, this application. So this is a network application, which is running under a secure IP network. Okay. And let's say this is a user and this user wants to access this particular application. So in order to access this application, this since it's a secure IP network, so this user has to compliance with uh, some rules and those rules are called security association. Okay. So what will happen? This user wants to communicate with this device or want to access this application. So this user will, will actually create or this user will use a security, uh, create a security association. Now this security association include multiple information that we will discuss in detail. And all the detail of security association are, are basically stored inside a security association database located in, in the, it's a central, a central repository, which is located or which is basically running inside a secure network. So now this secure, sec, uh, the security association database, it includes all the security associations. Like for example, if this is one user, so this user one will have one security association. Okay and it will avoid the replay attack and all the types of attacks can be avoided we will discuss in detail not only the outsider for example if there is any insider like a, a person who is inside the local area network or a secure network wants to access this application he also has to create a security association again to to follow the rules of the uh, or, or the policies and this security association detail will also located or will be stored in the security association database so whoever wants to communicate with the uh, with the secure or network application, they have to create a security association and that security is association will be permitted by the secure network and will be defined by secure network in that way. This security association is going to be one way. What does it mean? It means if this user, this client wants to communicate or send any data to this application, 
it will create a security association. If this application wants to return or respond back to this particular client, it also has to create a security association. So what does it mean? For bi-directional communication, bi-directional communication, we have to create two security associations. Okay, so user wants to communicate with the host or maybe a network application, security association is required. If the server or that host would like to respond you back, another security association needs to be created. And again, uh, the uh, central repository will be there to, to hold that data, which is also called SAD security association database. Now, uh, let, me, let me just give you a small definition for security association. Security association are basically used to enforce security policies on IP packets. Okay, enforce security policies for IP packets and everybody has to uh, create and create the security association for communication. As we discussed in IPsec, we offer two services. Like if you implement IPsec, there will be authentication header and there would be ESP, like for confidentiality. So at a time for security association, if you build one security association, you can only provide, let's say, uh, authentication header or you can use ESP. If you want authentication header plus ESP, this uh, client required two security associations. I get my point. So this security association maybe have authentication header and this security association is for confidentiality ESP. And if the client wants to, uh, the application wants to respond to you back, if again, two uh, authentication header plus the ESP is required, so it has to create two security associations. So for full implementation of IPsec, including AH plus ESP, we need four security association, like for bi-directional communication, bi-directional communication, which includes authentication header plus ESP. Okay, if you just need one application, so uh, you can say only uh, for bi-directional communication, two security associations are, are fine. Okay. So security association, you can say it's kind of a contract that need to be shared with all entities who wants to communicate uh, with each other. They have to agree with security association, the rules. Now security association uh, uh, has mainly these eight parameters. Uh, we will, I'll, I'll give you a quick overview and security. Uh, it's it's basically stored inside the central, central repository for, for bi-directional communication as well. So one of the parameter of security association is SPI, security parameter index, we will discuss in detail, but this is basically the ID of security association. So ID of the particular security association for which this data is. So SAD will have for each security association, this is basically what, I mean, these, it will have eight parameters, okay? So the first is, for, uh, is the ID of security association for which this particular information is stored. Second is the security protocol identifier. It defines which protocol is being used during that security association. As I mentioned, one security association uh, support only one function like authentication header or it could be ESP, encapsulating secure, uh, security payload. So it defines like which particular protocol, which service you use. Then sequence number counter, sequence number counter I mean, when you start the security association or let's say communication, it will be zero starting. And the maximum value could be two raised to power 32 minus one. 30, why 32? Because the size of uh, the security association is 32 bit. We will discuss that in detail. So counter mean when you, for example, let's say uh, send one packet during that security association, the packet counter will be zero then it will update the next counter. I mean, it will define how many bits will be there, data will be there. Then the next counter, counter number two, then number two, number three, number four, and all the way, okay? Next is the anti-replay window. Anti-replay window, it mainly avoids the duplication. Avoids duplication. Duplication of packets. What is that? Duplication of packets are mainly like, uh, let, let me just give you idea. So let's say uh, at receiver side, there will be a window, like something like that. And add, you know, at transport layer, let's say you have uh, 10 packets. So at transport layer, 
you actually divided your data into let's say 10 packets packet number one two three four and all the way to ten okay and receiver knows that because of synchronization i know that i am going to receive 10 packets so i have numbered all the packet packet one will go here two will go here three will go here four and all the way to ten if packet one has received i will put the mark i mean i'll just tick mark if packet two three has received i will tick mark so this will actually just to actually maintain your logs or you can say maintain your books so receiver can actually uh, see that i mean whether i have received the packet or not so if you receive multiple copies of packet we can just we can discard those this is called anti-replay windows to avoid the replay attack as well then authentication header info authentication header info is also included in in, in, uh, in the security association and which uh, which basically contains the algorithms like which algorithm you have used like for example you have used for example hmac you have used hashing or you are basically going to use for example um, ciphertext as authenticator and then key size the uh, key size what was the key the life of the key etc etc esp info it includes the info uh, for example which encryption algorithm you have used again the same thing encryption algorithm the key size and of course the key as well which key you have mainly used and the lifetime of a secure uh, of the security association because each security association has expiry time so it defines the time of expiry expiration time sorry expiration time expiration time of security association and the last is the security um, ipsec protocol modes so as i mentioned earlier ipsec can be implemented into two modes one of the mode is called transport mode and second mode which is more common in ipsec which is called tunneling mode tunnel mode so that's basically uh, tunnel mode in fact in which we implement typically for vpn so this is basically what security association is quickly what we have discussed security association relationship between two entities which wants to communicate securely communicate with each other and it's it is used to enforce the security policies on each and I, uh, each ip packet so if this user wants to communicate with this application this user will create a security association and all the security association uh, information will be stored in the database and this security information association is kind of a rule that this computer or this user will compliance with. Compliance with. Uh, again, for for bi-directional communication, we need two security associations. Let's say if this user has sent a message or established a wants to communicate or want to send the message using a security association receiver or this application, if they would like to respond to you back, they also have to create association with you. Okay. A different security association. One security association can provide only one service. It could be authentication header or ESP. You cannot have two services with one security association. So for fully implementation of IPsec bi-directional communication, we need four security associations. And these are some parameters which are stored inside the security association database central repository. The last thing for today for today is the the difference between transport mode and tunneling mode we will discuss that in detail the main difference is uh in the transport mode we encrypt we we just encrypt the payload while in tunneling mode we encrypt the ip header as well we will discuss in detail but just to give you idea for transport mode that's the main definition only payload like the actual data will be encrypted not ip header ip header which includes the source and destination ip address as you know ipsec is right here if you see firstly you got application layer then you got transport layer then you got internet layer over internet layer you got i mean you have the tcp header and all that stuff i'm just giving you a simple idea we will discuss in detail of course when we get to uh, uh, authentication header and all i'm just going to give you a simple idea we just encrypt the payload not the ip header like the source destination address will be unencrypted uh, tunneling mode is basically where we encrypt encrypt payload plus the ip header so ip header and the payload both will be encrypted that's the main difference how so let's say this is your transport mode in the transport mode what's going to happen if you want to put a security so this is the normal packet we will inject over 
IPsec header in between. So this is IP header and this is IPsec header. So whatever will come after IPsec header, which is basically our payload. So payload is going to be encrypted. We will insert over IP header in, a, in IPsec. For example, if you're going to use IPsec. So for each packet, this is going to happen. IP header, we will inject a new packet IPsec header and whatever comes after IPsec header, it will be encrypted and that's our payload. While in the tunneling mode, what's going to happen? We will treat the whole packet as a data or a payload, you can say. So what's going to happen? We will encrypt. This is your payload. Payload will be same. This is over IP header. As I mentioned, it's going to be over. Uh, it will be treated as a packet or information. And let's say we will inject over IP sec header here. And after that, what will happen? It will encrypt everything. But in order to actually transmit this packet, because IP sec header does not have source and destination address, we need to actually put the source and destination address, but the gateway address this time. It's going to be new IP header, like the gateways, the source and destination address. So this is basically the main difference. You can see here in the transport mode, we inject in between IP header will not be encrypted. IP header will be the same. In tunneling mode, we actually encrypt the whole packet, including the IP header. Everything will be encrypted. And then uh, what's going to happen, we will we will put append another uh, new IP header, which will include the uh, IP address of source and destination gateway. Just to give you idea, let's say this is your host outside host. I mean, I'm talking about remote network and that's let's say second client, for example, this is client number A and that's let's say client B. If client A and B, they communicate directly like end to end communication, socket to socket end to end socket to socket socket to socket communication so this is called transport layer or transport mode okay end to end communication socket to socket like protocol to protocol directly but for example if you are communicating with the gateway of this network and this is basically the gateway of second network this is the host b network and this is host a network like this is, for example, your home, for example, this is your home and this is your organization. So what's going to happen? The communication will occur between gateway to gateway. And this is basically tunnel mode. Like it's going to be encrypted. Of course, the data is encrypted. We will discuss that because everything will be encrypted like your internal data. So between that data will be fully encrypted. Nobody knows even where the data is heading to who's going to get the data, the actual destination. So this is gateway to gateway communication and that's basically one what we use in virtual private networks so this is just an um, intro and uh, now uh, of uh, uh, ipsec the different implementation schemes so this is basically what we have discussed so far we have discussed definition security association overview of our ip architecture and modes of operation so we will continue this chapter in the next video thank you